Today's Tale of Caesar's playing Battletech, and today we are going to be talking about the basics. So I'm just going to cover a few things like movement, um, facing your sides, how to uh, burn off armor on different sides, just getting the general idea of how the sensor ring works, cover, brace, choosing your targets, reserving, that kind of stuff, just all the general stuff here. So I've got a couple of mechs here, I've just got a few lights, some mediums, and uh, my AI, he's just sitting over here. We're on our first turn, right? And the first thing you're going to want to look at is we have him a light here. He can sprint all the way down here and he could be super happy. You know, he's in some trees. He's got a bunch of evasion and stuff. But you got to think about a lot of times your slowest mech here. Uh, if we were playing the single player campaign, we don't want Mr. Locust here picking up a bunch of sensor contacts and being way out in the middle by himself. So generally what I like to do with a lot of my forces is I like to push forward the mediums and uh, keep the lights just behind. That way if you hit a sensor contact, you are looking at um, you're looking at having your light being able to sort of scoot in and out of the battle and not be... If I was here and the AI ran forward, spotted my light, I don't have many options for my light. I can either leave it here or I just have to run back. So what's the point, right? Um, and having your light all the way forward. Yeah, sure, you can pick up contacts early. But in reality, you're just having to pull back anyway. So a lot of times, I'll just keep my lights pretty much towards the back here. Just keep them nice and healthy. Now, some of the other things you want to look at is where your cover is. So we know we've got a bunch of trees here, a bunch of trees here, open ground, water all this kind of stuff and you want to sort of gear up to go from cover to cover I mean 25% damage reduction you get 25 damage reduction if you go into trees you can see here we get this little shield here just means that this little um, locust here is gonna have uh, some decent cover if it does get shot at and 25% to a locust I mean that's a fair bit more armor to him I mean the poor guy he's running around in his little tinfoil uh, mech here and he just wants to have as much cover and as much evasion as he can get the other thing I want to talk about is the sensor ring every mech has this blue ring so you'll see there's a blue ring in the distance right uh, so I'll just it's over here what are your orders, Skipper? and it moves with the mech right that's basically the max range of our sensors so if there's an enemy mech that is inside of that blue ring we'll know about it Without that blue ring, anything past there, we have no idea. At the start of the game, it's important to sort of cover off a little bit of area. So I've got a blue ring over here. I've got a blue ring over here. These two mechs, you know, they're providing the sides. We've got some up the middle. And every single sensor range is the same. So my little locust here who has Tactics 8, I believe, on the pilot, he has the same blue ring as my pilot over here who's possibly an idiot at tactics, right? So you got to remember that every mech has exactly the same blue ring size, so no matter where you go, as long as the enemy... So if the enemy parks itself right here, their blue ring will be exactly the same size and will not get locked, right? So I don't actually want to shove my Jenna there because the Jenna is pretty much uh, made of paper as well, and we don't want him getting blasted down. The other thing I like to do is I like to keep up a lot of evasion before you uh, make contact here. Just means that if you do hit contact, um, at least your mechs have a little bit of a buffer, especially on the lights. Because um, without this uh, evasion, they are pretty much toast. We're going to jam probably Paradise here in the Vindy, just up in the middle while we wait for the AI to come to us. And I'll show you the next bit here. The AI is probably just going to sprint straight in. Obviously in single player games, it's not going to be the same. The AI is not going to just come straight at you. But for my little demonstration here, we'll just show off a little bit of uh, what's going on. So it'll take them a few turns. So what I'm going to do is while they're coming in, I'm going to show off um, some of the other stuff here as well. The thing with these, um, these mechs, so if we look at all these mechs here, we'll notice that... Over here on the left hand side of the mech, if we just hover over here, all we have is a left arm, right? 
Uh, we do have an LRM-10 and some ammo in this section here. But if the enemy was to just shoot us and blow off this arm, we're not too concerned. Now the thing is, is the left side of most mechs are like that. So if we have a look at this guy over here in the Vindy, we'll see that the Vindy has pretty much a small laser in his left arm, which the loss of a small laser is not a huge disaster. And we have an LRM-10. Most of your uh, big weapons tend to be on the right side. And I think over here, uh, the Locust is pretty much on both sides here. But uh, most of the bigger mechs will generally favor the right-hand side for their weapons. And what this means for us is if we go into combat, we actually need some enemy here. But uh, we might just move forward a little. We'll just move everyone forward and then I'll show the point here. Uh, we might just brace here. Yes, Commander. You can brace here and you can brace here while we wait for the enemy. So what this means for us is we know the enemy's over here, right? And the way firing works is it picks an arc. So in the front here uh, is the front arc. The sides mean that most of the shots will land on the side of a mech. So over here, if an enemy was to shoot us from this side, uh, nearly all of the shots would go into the either the side or if they're super lucky you might get the center torso here and uh, already we can see we're having a little bit of an issue so trees and the evasion kind of saved our ass a bit here um, just a little so we've got the enemy right and we know exactly where they are we know what's moved we know what has vision uh, so we know that they've got some vision over here if we have a look at this mech we can see the red eye over here it means that um, the enemy has vision on our little showboat here. Now I could reserve. And if I reserved, what this would mean would be all my mechs in this phase would go into phase 3. Is that a good choice? Probably not. If this was multiplayer and I was up against a human and he saw that I reserved here, he could potentially gang up on this mech with his two lights so he could get say a sensor lock which removes some of your evasion uh, gives vision and then fire in on a locust knowing that a locust has pretty much paper armor he could look to do a lot of damage to this even against the AI probably reserving here is not a good choice simply because they have vision here and if I move this mech I can pull right back and the only choice they have here is probably the Vindy, who's braced, right? And bracing here, this little shield, means that he does, the AI will do 50% less damage. Unfortunately, I just went over the fact that uh, I would probably prefer them to shoot me in the left side. And from here, they're probably shooting me in the front, which means that the damage will get spread. Mostly between the torso, some in the arms, some in the legs. Uh, the chances to hit the torso, I think, are about... Uh, 20 to 25 percent I think so you got uh, 20 here 20 here and 25 in the middle and then arms can't quite remember off the top of my head what the uh, percentages are but normally the damage will go towards the torso some in the arms some in the legs and if you're super unlucky it'll be a headshot so in saying all that what we want to do is we probably want to move showboat to get her out of here now the enemy is unlikely to come all the way towards us. So what I would probably do here is look to just do a move over here. And I didn't quite see which mech moved. I wasn't sure if it was this guy. I'm pretty sure firing arcs, probably this guy here. And what this tends to mean is that this guy has moved and fired. And we can also see that he's moved and fired with no cover here. Being a light mech, he's probably got a fair bit of evasion built up. So you've got to kind of make a choice here, right? I could move over here and lock this guy to give me vision. So I, I have a uh, ability here to sensor lock, which removes evasion and gives me vision. If I get vision on this guy, what can I do? I could probably sit here with Paradise and Fire. I could maybe fire some shots with Apex and unlikely, but maybe possible, I could fire with a Jenna. Would it be worth it? Maybe, depending on what this guy was. Otherwise, I could go for a sprint here, pull myself more into the middle here. We can't really get a lot of vision, unfortunately. If I did sprint, it would use up all of my moves here, um, so I wouldn't be able to sense lock. 
I'll probably go for the sensor lock here. I think it's worthwhile. And uh, it also means that poor old uh, Showboat and the Locust gets out of, uh, out of death range here. The AI could push into these trees. In trees, you get a little bit less vision. So hopefully, uh, Showboat is okay here. If this was humans, they're unlikely to push a mech, a light mech, to here to get vision. If they did, it probably wouldn't be so good for them. So we'll go for the sensor lock here. We'll remove some evasion from this guy. And we are looking pretty good here. Really good. Damage to the Vindy, not so bad. The brace is really what's kicking butt here. In the single player, you're probably going to want to use a lot of bracing to just uh, basically get the max out of your armor. The bulwark ability, uh, who I have on Confirmed. over here, uh, just means that you can go into brace. I've actually got my pilots really badly set up here, but uh, you could brace on someone without moving and firing, which is pretty nice. So I know what's going on here. I know that uh, this light mech here has fired. There's only one other mech to go. So I'd probably reserve here. I just want to see what the enemy's going to do. Um, they could possibly push themselves forward. This mech here still has to go. It'll probably fire from here. Uh, it might actually move a bit up forward towards us and then fire. It might not build up too much evasion, which would be fairly nice for us. So here we can see the uh, firing arcs. And we know that the enemy fired into the left side. Given the choices, if you get choices here, left side, unless you're about to blow off an arm and get into center torso, it's generally not a good idea. You're wanting to go for the right side of mechs to uh, maximize a bit of damage there. So we have a choice here, right? We can move our Jenner in and fire. Or, knowing that this guy is already... All they have here is a medium mech, right? Uh, so, I would probably rather see what the medium mech's likely to do over just letting, uh, just having my go. Because that way we can go with Paradise, we could punch this, possibly, and then uh, we could fire in and do a fair bit of damage to the Jenna. Knowing that this only really has this for a target, I'm pretty happy. The Vindicator's got a lot of armor. He's braced. There's not too much that's going to threaten him. And that sounds like a large laser and a bunch of uh, bunch of LRMs. So now we've got to look at what we want to do, right? So we know that the Vindicator is pretty much in a hard place. You have orders? If I leave him here, he's just going to get hammered. I can't fire from here. I could fire from here, but the risk of Paradise firing from here means he'll have no evasion. He'll also only have trees for cover. If I was to fire him, I would probably prefer to move him. So if you see if I move here, he gets two evasion, right? So instead of sitting here and firing, losing my brace and only having trees, I would probably move here, fire, gain the two evasion, and have the trees. You're generally better off moving if you can to gain that evasion if you're going to lose this brace. If you were going to keep this brace, say if this was um, Ozone here, Ozone needs to stay still to gain um, guard for free, the brace and the guard for free. So if the choice was I could bulwark here and keep my brace, I would probably stay still. But without brace, you're going to go down to 25% damage reduction, so you're better off getting that evasion to at least tank a little bit here. So now, we're looking at what we want to do, right? We have a mech over here who has one bit of evasion and no cover. We have a mech here who has three bits of evasion and some cover. He's threatening us a little. He could get behind us and blast us a bit. Commander. So I have some choices here, right? I could move here. Fire on this guy and fire on this guy. Or I could uh, just fire on this guy solely. What I would probably rather do is drain some evasion from this guy, fire in with my better damage here, and then uh, drain a bit more evasion. So we'd probably rather look at something like this if we can get it. So we can move here, we can fire. We have really bad hit chances, right? 
But what we're looking to do with these hit chances is drain off the evasion on this guy and uh, just plow him over. We know that the Jenna has very little in the way of uh, um, armor, right? So we can see that if we looked at one of our other mechs. But generally, you just try to memorize that the lights have very little in the way of armor. Reporting. Paradise can fire in. We have to be careful. So we want to put the Centurion here. We don't want to take that spot with the uh, Ozone because I'd rather that uh, the Centurion had a better shot at this. We could probably kill this guy in the go. What's the plan? And to do even better at this, the way melee works is it ignores evasion here and it ignores cover. So I could actually move in and punch this guy. If I move to here, I know that I'll get two evasion. We'll do a fair chunk of damage. We'll do 80, 55 damage here on a melee hit. So we can choose our squares, right? And we know that if we move here, we get two evasion. And if you watch, I'll shred a bit of evasion off this guy. Here we go. Kick him in the leg. Nicely done. So we've got our two evasion. We've got our trees. This guy's taken a bunch of damage. He's now down to two evasion. Next, we'll go with... Uh, where are you? Ozone here. To get him down to one evasion. Oh, actually, no evasion. Uh, let's explain stability here. So we can see that this guy has a white marker right here. If you see, I hover over. He has two yellow bars and a white little marker, right? If I look here, my white marker is slightly higher up. The reason for this is the pilots in there have a skill called piloting. And as soon as you hit that white marker with um, the yellow bars, it removes their evasion. So this guy now has zero evasion, right? So if it was, if I'd punched this mech here, he would have only done about three and a bit um, yellow bars of stability damage. So that wouldn't be enough to remove my evasion over here. So that's why he's lost his evasion. So the actual kick has done more than remove um, a bit of armor here. It's removed his evasion, which sets him up to take a lot of damage here. So we can see now we've gone from, what did we have before? 35s and 40s? To into 70s, right? If we clear this guy, the AI is going to have very little vision here. So if this was a human, and this is what's giving them vision, then uh, by clearing this mech off, he then has to either sense a lock with something from afar, or he has to come in, right? So I am firing into the left side. It's the only side I've got. But I'll tell you one other thing here. So we'll move in here. And we'll have a look. So, if we actually look, uh, can we get better hit chances? 90s versus 90s. So you can see a couple of um, the white bars here. If I were to turn off um, some of these. So we can see this one here. The AC is pretty much in a very good range. Because it's um, this sort of yellowy, this white, this full white. Whereas if we turn on... Um, the LRMs, we can see that we've got this funny sort of half-white, opaque color. Basically, it just means that the LRMs are in too close. So LRMs have a bit of a range that are required. They require a minimum range. I'll show you when I move in here. Uh, so we're going to move in. I'm actually going to face my mech like this. And the reason I'm going to face my mech, she, we're not going to face our mech like that. We're going to face them a bit further forward. And the reason I'm going to do this is if the AI wants to shoot me in the front, I'm happy for that. If I was to face too far to the side, then the AI is more likely to shoot me into this AC arm. And I don't particularly want a lot of damage on this AC arm because it is most of, my, uh, most of my actual damage here. So if we have a look over our LRMs, we can see we're inside a min range here. And it adds plus 8 to our dice roll. So we basically have a real hard time hitting this guy. Now we can see, because we're coming in from this side of this mech, we can see here that we get a red ring on this side. I, if I move to, say, over here, actually probably more over here, we'd be shooting him into the front. Now the reason this is important is because later on in some games, you'll get choices here. A Jenna, it's okay to maybe shoot in the left side because he does have um, a lot of medium lasers here. But if this had been another Centurion, and I had the option to shoot him in the front or the side, 
and it was exactly the same, so here I have no cover, and here I'd have no cover, I would prefer to shoot him in the front. Basically because this left arm has very little in it, other than the LRM-10, whereas if you can score, say, a hit on the other side against the right-hand side into the AC, or you get center torso hits, you're better off burning that armor than you are this left side. But the other consideration here is the leg. So if you see a leg like this, say this was a Centurion and his legs looked exactly the same, I would probably prefer to shoot him in the left side. And the reason for that is you get a higher chance from this side, you get a high chance to hit this leg. And if you blow off a leg, the mech's going to fall down and you get to do what's called cooled shots, which is basically you get to pick a part of the mech here and uh, fire into it which is a lot better off. It also knocks it down an initiative phase. So instead of, uh, instead of the medium going in uh, this phase here, for the next turn he would actually get pushed into phase 2. So a lot of my mechs would get to go here. So I'd rather risk the chance of hitting this leg and uh, having a go at him on the floor than actually shooting him in the front. So we're going to blast this guy. And uh, we're going to hammer off that arm, hopefully. Alright, that's not great. I would have preferred that we killed this guy because now we are a little exposed. So I've taken the risk here and I've taken a lot of my mechs out of cover. So if the AI has any vision here, it will should plow into these. If this was a human, if I was playing against this side and I saw a mech that had moved here, a medium mech that had moved here, I would probably call this out as a target. And the reason I'd call this out for a target is because it would have very little evasion. It's a medium mech. They don't move, unless it's something like a Kentaro and it's sprinted, they don't move that fast. Um, and they don't build up a lot of evasion. You could probably sensor lock something like this and do full damage to it if uh, your opponent reserved down. So last turn, I, did, I didn't reserve straight away. This turn, I would probably be pretty happy to reserve here. The reason I'd be pretty happy to reserve here is this guy possibly has no vision over here. Even if he does, we've got a lot of evasion going here. He does have vision here, but we've still got a lot of evasion going here. Maybe I could look to cripple this guy. So what we might do here is I would probably prefer to not reserve. I did think about reserving, but this guy hasn't moved right. He's still in the same position. We've got an SRM4 and a bunch of medium lasers. Now, if you remember before, I was saying that if this leg goes down, he gets pushed back a phase, right? Plus, we get to call shots. So, it's probably better off to knock this guy on the ground than to uh, let him just have a free move here. Now, we could move around to the front and shoot him in the front, but I would say the leg shots would be a lot better for us. Given the positions we can take, I would probably rather have the evasion here. It's a little dangerous. See this guy has a red eye. He, even if we kill this, this has vision on us and this has vision on us, right? So we're risking a fair bit here by moving on in. But I think it's worth the risk to put this guy on the floor. And we'll probably twist like this. Now the scary thing here is this guy is going to get a turn, right? The back of these mechs have pretty much no armor on them, right? So this guy here actually has the option to do, uh, what's this, 140 damage to the back of our little uh, Jenna here, which could kill us. So you got to weigh up the risk here of moving on in, because the AI sometimes does little crazy things. And in single player, the AI doesn't care, right? It doesn't care that it loses a mech, whereas you, as the player, are going to care pretty much if one of your uh, nice juicy mechs gets destroyed here. I still think it's worth the risk. Uh, we'll have a little bit of evasion. We're going to have four evasion. The AI shouldn't be able to do in that, Jenna. I say shouldn't, but uh, it can get a little exciting here. We do have a fairly good chance to blow off a lot of this stuff, though. We've got four chances to hit with these lasers. We've got four chances to hit with one of these SRMs. I mean, 75 is not great, but I'm pretty confident that we'll get a leg here. Come on, leg. And there goes his leg. So not only have we pretty much crippled this mech, but he's down to 
36 internal structure here. We've got trees. We've got fairly good cover. Panther's moving in. He's having a go here, but our evasion has kept us pretty solid here, right? That four evasion has done the work it needs to do. And we have done the work we need to do here, right? Unfortunately, the work we need to do may not be enough. Even if we do full damage here against this guy, he probably won't die, and he'll get to do some damage to the back of us here. Uh, so we can, we've got two choices here. If a mech loses both its legs, it's dead. In single player, I would probably rather try for the leg shot here, just so that I can salvage this mech. The torso shot, not so much. Now, here comes the sketchy part, right? I could go for this torso shot. Even if I hit, I wouldn't kill this mech. But I have 53% chance to at least hit the... I've got 75% to hit, and then I've got 53 to hit the torso, right? On the cold shot. I would probably rather go for this leg and risk the chance of blowing this leg off and getting rid of this mech now. Even if this survives... We can finish it off with any other mech, but I'd rather risk this now to try and clear him. See if uh, my risk pays off, and there it is. He is done. So now, if this was a human, at least we're kind of even the odds here. Uh, we've taken out a light, and we've taken very little damage in return. We have chucked in our uh, Jenna pretty much to the wolves here. Since what's going to happen is uh, he's going to get hammered by probably this light mech here. But in saying that, we will be able to get him out straight away next turn. He does have some heat issues, which we can resolve by just bracing him. So we'll probably just move and brace, which will be fine for him. Reporting. Next up, we have a couple of targets here. I'll, so I'll show you what, uh, what we've got here. We can have vision here, or I could move to give myself vision here. Now... This is kind of a good move, because I don't know how much evasion this guy has, but I'm guessing it's going to be less than uh, less than this guy here. The only problem with this move is we're now putting ourselves inside of um, our LRM range here, right? But LRM 5 does pretty minimal damage, so at this point in time, we probably don't really care about this anymore. So we'll just turn on our, uh, our mech here. Now, the other choice we can make here is we can seal this, right? These guys have left-hand shots unless they come around here to shoot us in the front. They could maybe swing around the back, but to get back shots, they kind of have to go here. Now, I could fire on this. I have no evasion. My armor is a little bled off. But I think I would rather brace here, and the reason I'd rather brace is I give the vision, and the uh, the centurion here can come around the corner and do the work he needs to do. While two evasion is okay, it's not the best, and we should do a fair whack of damage to this guy. We could actually even move in closer. Uh, so we've got 70s here versus here. It's exactly the same, right? So we'll probably just move in nice and close. We could even twist ourselves just a little here. So the choices are I could sit here and twist like so to give left hand shots onto the Centurion. Moving out. Which is probably what I would prefer. The enemy could jump, try for back shots, but I don't think they would um, they'd be so successful in that. They could do it, right? So this guy can probably get to, I think he could get to about here and maybe shoot me in the back. He's probably more likely to shoot this. If it was a human, jumping into here might be okay, but we can see that this guy is rather hot. So we can see this red bar here. This bar here is the same on the panther, and we can see he's already rather hot. If he were to jump to here and fire either the PPC or the SRM, I know that a panther has either of those, it's going to cost him a lot of heat. He would probably shut down from that, <clears throat> and that's why moving here is not so bad. Because you're looking at the heat, and you're going, well... <clears throat> He could have a go at me, but if he shuts down to do it, it's probably well worth. We've got enough armor here and internals that we could probably tank through just the back shot for a, uh, a for a shutdown. And firing in, 
on this guy. I mean, he's not going to survive. I would rather this guy would go down. So, some of the other things you've got to think about when you're choosing targets here is how much damage people can do. So once again, he's firing into the left side, which is great for me. I mean, wow, I'm going to lose a small laser, but my mech is going to be super happy here. <clears throat> So what I could do, and what I am going to do, is I'm going to flick out my Jenna here. He's going to have vision no matter what. But I can get to about here. I can rotate probably just enough to be happy. And I'll brace. I could fire. I could move to here, and I could fire. It might be worth the risk. Maybe. But uh, if this was multiplayer, and this guy had some sensor locking here, moving here with your light is kind of dangerous uh, especially with a light that is uh, a Jenna because a Jenna will just explode into bits if it gets shot anywhere decent the risk of here if this was multiplayer is this guy could death them above us do a chunk of damage and then uh, remove our guard so I'd probably prefer to move just back here keep my Jenna going for a little let the mediums tank up and be a-okay. So we'll move you out, buddy. I could have reserved, since he's only got the uh, panther to go here. But I think we'll just get some heat back. We'll just uh, brace up and be fairly happy. Ooh, that's a death room above. So, <clears throat> the AI has picked on the left side completely right. Which is great for us. All we've lost here is an LRM-5, some uh, LRM ammo, but we have fairly much our PPC intact, which is the main primary weapon here. At best, the LRM-5 could do 20 damage up close, whereas the PPC is nice and good um, from afar, so we'll go in with that. Now, I have a choice of shooting on this guy or this guy. I'd probably rather shoot this guy. Um, just to add up some damage, I actually think what we're going to do here is we're going to end up milling this guy. Now, if we look at this mech, right? So this panther here um, has its primary weapon on the uh, right-hand side, right? His PPC. He does have some SRMs. I forget where the SRMs sit. I have a feeling they're in the torso there. It looks like it's in the torso. But if we can get that PPC off, it's actually most of his damage. Um, even though he's in pretty close, so he's probably not looking at uh, doing a truckload of damage. <clears throat> so we will show off a bit of uh, firing on this guy. We've got to be careful with the old Locust. It is a little bit of a death trap. I could move the Locust now, but instead I'd rather that the AI did its move from here. Death them above has removed our guard here. Any melee hits that uh, hit you will remove uh, will remove your uh, entrench and your guard. So we can see the shield's gone to this shield here instead. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move Paradise out of here. Now I've got a choice. I could punch this guy. But what would happen is if I melee this guy, I would rotate back armor. Would be presented to this guy out here, which would be a little bit of a death... Uh, death for us I would probably rather go for something like this I'd probably move over here um, I could shoot this guy I'd probably rather hit this guy with apex here we can see that his stability is already wrecked so if we punch this guy in the side I'd rather punch him in the side than the back once he falls over back shots become a lot harder uh, we are doing 70 damage so if you look here we would probably clean out anything we hit but uh, if we hit him in the side, we could probably get rid of some of this. If we cave off anything, we have more chances to slowly move into that center torso here. Plus, we're pretty likely to knock him over here. So when we roll, punch him over. Hopefully we don't hit a... Actually, we... leg's pretty good. So this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. You want to get knockdowns as best you can. Because then you can get uh, initiative... You get an initiative bonus, you get to call shots on him. Now, we can look to go in with Showboat. We're looking for a move that'll get us the most evasion here. To try and keep ourselves pretty happy. 
We could probably even move to somewhere like this and engage with the machine guns. At this point in time, this amount of evasion, I'm pretty happy to risk the locust in here. Because uh, now we're going to just do as much damage as we can. If he chooses to fire on the locust, so be it. But uh, with this amount of evasion and uh, tree cover, I'm fairly happy for nothing to happen here. Now, if this was single player, I'd probably rather keep um, Paradise alive here. So if we jump here, we can still see that he has full vision of us, right? But what we're going to do is we're now going to rotate ourselves a little here to present the other side. So the good reason for this is if we present... Come on, buddy. Let's jump here. We're going to have full evasion. We've got most of our heat. And now <clears throat> we're presenting this side, right? Now we start risking in this side here. We've got trees. We've got full cover. And we've got enough armor that we can fire the PPC in pretty happily. Uh, we have blocked our shot a little, which is kind of annoying. Given this choice, I'd probably rather just brace up to keep Paradise alive and happy in his mech. This guy is going to come in. He's probably going to try and go for the back. Or, yep, here he goes. AI, I'm loving it. He's shooting me in the left side, which is great for us. Right hand shots. You don't want them at all, whereas uh, left hand are some of the best shots here. So I have some choices, right? I can move to here, or I could maybe pick something like over here. Over here is pretty nice. I can take trees. I can get full evasion. He still has vision on us, which is kind of annoying. But uh, I would take anything that gives me pretty much a decent amount of evasion. Anything that can rotate fairly well, I'd rather rotate fully like this because I'm scared that the commando might try to get behind me. So I'd rather just rotate to the front, especially with a Jenna. You want to uh, try and just spread out the rounds here. Cool shots. <clears throat> so here we have a choice on the leg, which has a fair amount of armor still left on it. It has, what, uh, 53 armor. So we've got armor plus internals versus uh, burning the middle here. I could risk my little percentage here to shoot him in the leg. I would actually rather shoot him in the torso here. Especially if this was uh, multiplayer. I just want to down this target. And we are doing close to... So we do 140 damage right. That will share right through the center torso. Uh, we don't have probably enough... To, we, we might. Depending on if the odds are with us. You know, we're going to roll okay-ish here. We've got a bit of trees... So, we are losing a little bit of damage that, to that, but if we roll, okay, we should burn through this guy. Alright, looks like we spread out our damage a little. I saw a couple of hits hit. to uh, non-critical parts. But it doesn't matter now. We're pretty much in the end stretch here. Now, I could stand here and fire, right? But that would be fairly terrible. And the reason it's fairly terrible is a locust has no armor. If I was the enemy and I saw a locust just sit tight and uh, not move, even with trees, it's just not enough. So you need to make sure that you're kind of moving with your locust to try and get a little bit of your speed out here. It looks like we've got some problems though. Some severe problems. Hmm. Anywhere we kind of pick is not great. So we might have to look at uh, pushing this guy backwards. We have some issues with firing. You can see the red line. You see how um, the red line going to this guy kind of gets uh, cut in the middle here. It means that there is something obstructing partially. And that's providing a lot of... Uh, it'll provide a issue with firing. So we've got 75 here. But if we look over here, we probably still have 75 Whereas if we went up close, we have 85s here, right? This guy is giving vision. So if we don't move our locust too much, he's going to get pounded here, possibly. We could move to finish this guy, though. I would like to finish him. Uh, but I definitely want some evasion. So we can get three evasion here and rotate enough. Three evasion here. 
So we're looking at probably no direct fire from down here unless the AI shifts this way. Somewhere like this is probably fairly good for us. This guy, we know he has a large laser and the direct fire um, will do us in a little. Whereas if we fire from here, 75 to hit, kind of okay. If he had any sensor locking, I probably wouldn't move here. I would probably take a sprint on the Locust. Uh, the reason for that is he hasn't moved enough to have enough evasion here to risk this. Um, and also, this guy had enough armor to just really tank through this. I probably would have preferred to have moved my Locust out and keep him alive. Because this guy's still got... He's still got his PPC here. He's actually going to try and whack us here. Not bad, but uh, he needs to do more than that. Definitely needs to do more than that. I'd probably rather move the Centurion now. We could go for a shot on the back of this guy. The other choice here is AI will do its move, right? And then we can actually just hose this guy down without having to worry about what this guy's going to do. So we'll reserve. We'll see what this guy does. He's gonna just probably going to fire over here. It is into the right side, which is a little scary since uh, we are starting to lose a bit of armor on uh, the center torso here. So if we look at uh, Apex here, we've lost... We're down to nine armor. As soon as we're through that armor, our uh, AC ammo there is a little exposed, and it's a little scary. Um, this guy could probably get behind us, which is also a little scary. We have plenty of heat here on Paradise. I'd probably like to, uh, I'd actually really like to shoot this guy on the side. Unfortunately, the PPC is too close. So we're going to have to look for something else here. A front shot is not too bad. So we will risk the, uh, we'll risk the front shot here. And the reason I'll risk the front shot is we get a fairly okay chance to hit that center torso. And that's all we really need, right? I would have preferred if this was... If I still had the SRM or the LRM. Um, if I still had the LRM, this would have been great. Because we were looking at five chances to just do a little bit of damage here. We'll go with the PPC. And we're going to slam it right into where we don't need it. Which is unfortunate. But uh, that'll have to do. Somewhat. Hmm. Definitely want trees. If I can keep them. Doesn't look hopeful, does it? This is a bit of a mess in here. Probably back up hmm, something like this. And try and get rid of this guy here. We're just going to have to ignore the... Uh, we're going to have to ignore this guy. The good thing with this rotation right here is we're offering up the left side again. So uh, I'm fairly okay with this since uh, I would rather get shot there than uh, getting shot into the right. Alright, now we just got to pray a little to RN Jesus that we manage this. But we've got 10 chances here. I mean, 45 is not great, but all we need is just a little bit of luck to slam in two rockets here. Oof. There we go. Come on, baby. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Shame we couldn't get this guy when he was in his um when he was on the ground here. Focus. This is going to hurt a little. It's not too bad though. It could could focus up on the locust here. Do some serious work there. And there it comes. Ooh. Hurting. And I did say that Locust is basically made of uh, paper here. We're going to try and keep our Locust out of this fight now. We could move over here. He still has vision on us, which is terrible. We'll probably go here. Remove this vision. So that this guy can't have a go at the Locust. And we'll just sensor lock this guy down. So that we, uh, we can just jam in all the damage we need. This guy has no terrain cover. He has no evasion now. It's going to hurt a lot. Uh, we'll probably 
reserve here. I would like to see what this guy is going to do. Although, if we kill this guy, he will have no vision. So the choices are we fire in. I'd probably like to fire into the side here. If I could. Uh, if we have a look at this guy. Yeah. We could maybe break off that large laser, which would be a fair chunk of his damage. We are a little hot, unfortunately. Um, everything else on this mech is pretty pristine, though. So, we're going to have to probably go here and just hammer this guy down. Try and get rid of a bit of his damage. If we can. Obviously, if this was single player, this would be a loss of an arm, since we are destroying it. Now, I could fire in for the lasers or the SRMs. I'd probably rather do the SRMs so that we can get some stability damage. And we might be able to punch this guy into the ground. He is arc light. He is moving out of phase here. So even if we do punch him into the ground, um, he will get up straight away. But I'm, I kind of like stability damage. And uh, we do have a chance to do a lot more damage with the SRMs as well. Normally, you're wanting to burn through quite a fair bit of your heat. If you can, you just want to ride that sort of heat barrier. And here we go. Left side of the arm. Really good for us. Because there is, uh, you know, there's plenty of armor there. And now, now we just get to beat on this guy as much as we like. We'll probably just fire in again. So if we have a look here, I'll show you um, what this guy looks like. We are a little hot. So we're going to have to take care of that. I would probably prefer the PPC. And the reason I prefer the PPC is A, it does more damage, but B, if you hit with a PPC, um, he gets impaired. So he'll get a plus one to, uh, he gets a plus one to his dice roll because we hit with a PPC here. 80% to hit. All we need is this to hit and uh, we could kill him. We could also do in with just the medium laser since it's only 25% damage required. And uh, we've got a fairly good chance to hit in here. So we'll probably just go with the medium laser. Save as much heat as we can. We don't really need the overkill. If we hit with the PPC onto the leg, he's not going to die anyway. Whereas if we hit with the laser here, he will be gone. And we get all our heat back. Now we've got a problem here. We don't have any vision on uh, this mech here. Thing is, is he has no vision on us as well. So if we look here... If we move anywhere, he has no vision, right? So there's no point in running up towards this guy. We have a fair bit of heat. And all we need to do is we could just move here. Leave our left arm fire facing towards him. He could move around this side, but he's probably not going to get enough to uh, get to the back. So we'll move something like this. And then we'll just brace. <clears throat> and the reason I'm going to brace here is now the AI is absolutely stuffed, right? We reserve into him. He has to take his move. The only move he can do is move towards us. Or, alternatively, he can just move like that, right? But that's no good to him. Good to go. Because way back here is our Locust. And we'll just keep our Locust out of range here as best we can. And just do sense locking now. So we can pick this guy down slowly at our leisure, right? So you can see the blue ring here. You got to be careful when you're moving your mech. Uh, if I moved too far this way, I wouldn't be able to sense lock. You can only sense lock within your blue ring here. Um, so you've got to be careful when you move. Alternatively, there is another thing you can do. Um, so we know that his blue ring extends about this far back, right? If this was a sense locking mech, and he moved here and sense locked us, if you move outside of everybody's blue ring, so if he had a mech here and a mech over here, the blue rings would extend to about here and about here, right, on the enemy. If we moved our mech, so say he sense locked our locust and we thought he was going to fire on this, we could actually just move our locust outside of his blue rings and he would lose vision on us, which is a pretty good tactic to keep some of your lights alive and uh, <clears throat> unlocked, really. So this guy should still have no vision here. So if we have a look, uh, if we have a look on Apex, right... So we can see that if we move here, he would have vision. Uh, if we move here, he would have vision. But if we move here, we can just happily fire in and blast this guy. Even though he's braced here, I will more than happily fire. We're definitely going to rotate still. I just want to keep that uh, 
I just want to keep the damage on this side. So if he moves, he's got to move to about here and still fire into the side, hopefully. So we'll just uh, absolutely just pamel this guy. So bracing, while it's going to eat some stuff, I mean, you're pretty much, you're pretty much stuffed here, right? So we're going to rotate. We'll leave the mech towards the front here. There's no way he's going to get towards the Vindy. But uh, it's nice to always just uh, keep your armor going, right? Firing the PPC. So in his turn, he's going to have a harder time firing on us. We could roll the Jenna in. But you got to remember that this guy here, he could probably manhandle the Jenna fairly well. Um, which is something that we do not want to happen to us. So we're just going to run our Jenna down here. We're going to brace up. And we're going to be fairly happy that uh, nothing else is going to sort of damage us here. And then all you do is you just reserve back into him. He's got to come towards us if he wants vision. We don't have a brace going. But uh, the AI, I mean, what's his choices, right? His choices are to just uh, fairly much sit here and take some damage. So here, if he had sensor locked this, all I would have to do is move so that my blue ring is sitting here, right? And now he would have no vision on me. Even though he's sensor locked, as soon as you're outside of this blue ring, then uh, vision is pretty much gone. The alternative, if someone does this to you though, say you locked, say he, say you're the enemy, right? And you locked this mech here, and suddenly he pushed back, right? So he pushed back to, say, here. You can risk then jumping one of your own mechs forward and pushing your sensor lock ring even further this way and picking him up again. As soon as you pick him up again, he'll be uh, revealed. The only problem with that is obviously you're pushing a mech towards the enemy, uh, so you can overextend doing that, but uh, it is a valid tactic to try and get uh, a sensor lock going. We're just going to keep up our evasion here. It's always nice to keep some evasion going on your lights. Even if you're uh, pretty much certain that the enemy is not going to do anything to you. It's just nice to keep them going in case there's any surprises. We're going to get a focus here, so we will be able to do some serious damage here. The other thing is I've taken Apex here. Oh, see this? So, we have a choice here, right? I could fire into the side or the front. I would rather fire into the front. And the reason I'd rather fire into the front is uh, there is nothing in this arm that I want. There is the LRM-10, but at this close combat sort of brawling range, the LRM-10 is no good to you. Um, whereas I would rather hit things like the center torso. I've got chances to hit the center torso, this torso, here, you know. Instead of just having only chances to hit this side of the mech, I'd rather have chances to hit uh, into the center torso. I mean, if I come in from the side, you still get chances to hit the center torso, but it's completely, it's really small. You have really high chances to hit all of this stuff. I think you have about 4 or 5% chance to hit the center torso. So we're just going to plow into him. And we still managed to hit the wrong side anyway. Sometimes the uh, dice roll are just not with you, unfortunately. But uh, he's going to have a hard life in here. He's going to have an absolute hard life. We're going to try and keep... You want to normally keep your mechs as far away as you can here. Um, just so that if he takes a move forward. So I could go somewhere like here and maybe brawl. But then he'd just move forward and he could fire at me. Whereas if I sit at sort of this sort of range. Which is all I need, right? Then uh, we're fairly happy here. Firing into the front again. Instead of the side. So that we get a chance to hit. Man, we are having a bad time here. So we have a chance to hit the um, center torso. Ozone. We'll just move Ozone around this way. Three evasions, pretty good. If this guy comes in close, Ozone's kind of in a uh, position to help out a little here. Keep him braced up. Keep him moving. Reserving again. If this is a human, this is exactly what you want to be doing to them, right? I mean, this AI has gone berserk, but uh, that's unfortunate. I think we'll call it there for uh, blowing this AI up, though, because... Uh, there's no real need for us to go through turn after turn. So just a couple of the basics. Make sure you're getting shot on the left side most of the time. You do have to be aware that some mechs do have important stuff on the left side. But generally, 
Uh, a lot of the mechs don't. They just have a spare arm or they have a light laser. You're looking for cover nearly all of the time. The reason trees are really important, if this mech gets knocked down, at least if I've got tree cover, I'm taking less damage on my cold shots as well. Uh, so tree cover is really important. If I braced out here, say I saw a mech that braced in the middle over here, and I had a chance to punch it, I would run and punch that and then fire everything onto that. The reason for that is because without cover and without your brace, you're taking full damage, right? So you got to be careful with just bracing in the wild against humans, or even the AI, because sometimes they'll just death them above you. So I prefer to, even if I have to, brace in the trees, just so that if I do lose my brace, um, I can fall back on that 25% cover. So moving from thing to thing. Uh, try to keep up your evasion on your lights. If you see, in a lot of my games on multiplayer, I'll see a sensor locking mech, and it'll be here... It'll move forward about this far, right? It's a light mech and it moves about this far. Instantly, you know that a mech like that has no evasion, right? And if he's sensor locked, he's taken an action instead of bracing. So he's taken a move and an action, right? Which means he has very little evasion and he maybe at best has tree cover. Lights with tree cover, it's generally not enough. If I was to, if I wanted to sensor lock and my light was here, I would probably try and get to tree cover over here instead. Uh, the reason for that is you want to try and maximize your evasion, right? Just so that uh, if the enemy does pick up on your light, you at least have some evasion to burn. Uh, so this guy here, if he gets sensor locked, he would be down to one evasion, which is better than if I hadn't moved him or if I'd moved him just to get two, which would be uh, very bad. So that's that also kind of comes back to choosing your target, right? If you see a light that's barely moved, it's probably a better target than a medium that's sort of come in and fired at you. Because you kind of you kind of got a decent chance to just clear lights. Um, and reserving. Obviously, I've seen a lot of people um, that won't reserve in multiplayer. Against the AI, reserving is super strong, right? I mean, you can see already that uh, this guy's stuffed. All he can do is go back and forth. If he comes in, he's dead. Um, against AI... Reserving is pretty much your best plan. You've got to be careful with your lights though. If your light's visible and you reserve, you're obviously risking it just getting chunked. Um, but uh, if your lights aren't visible and you've got a tanking medium, then I'm normally pretty happy to reserve all the way down. Especially if it's braced and it's the only target people can see, then uh, they're just going to fire into a braced medium or a braced heavy or a braced assault, you know, and it's not going to care about that. It's not going to care at all. So, and the other thing I see a lot of people do is they'll reserve all the way down to phase one. You don't need to do that. The way it works is <clears throat> if someone's had a turn, so say I had to go first, right? If I went, so say he's got four mechs and I've got four mechs. If I go first, say I move something away back here, I move this guy, and I have my turn, right? So I've had my turn. And I'm happy, right? If this guy now reserves, because it goes... So I've had my turn. It's now his turn, right? So he's got his four mechs here. If he reserves down, I reserve, right? It's his turn always. There's no need to then keep reserving down to one, because it's always his turn. The other thing you can do with initiative is whoever... Say I didn't see the AI, right? Whoever locks... The other person first so say it's my movement phase and i run down here and i find a bunch of contacts back here if i've got arc light here and he's got arc light here in a light it's his start if he was to run into me and sensor lock me first and we both had arc light down in phase one then it's my start so it's whoever pushes into who first generally gets uh the other person to start so the way it works is it's uh it always rotates whoever's turn it is so my turn will then go into his turn if that kind of makes sense hopefully it does and you just got to be aware of your sense lock rings as well basically um, especially with your lights just to try and keep things out of phase here the other thing I find if I find someone and it's my turn first and they can't see a lot of my mechs at the back it's generally a good idea. This is only a multiplayer and single player. Obviously, you want to be moving your mechs forward. But in multiplayer, if they can't see you, if they've got their ring like this, right? 
and uh, that's actually a huge ring. But say the blue ring ends up here, and he can't see this mech. If I move this mech over here, then he has no idea what I've done, right? Because I'm not inside this blue ring. Yeah, this blue ring, but we're just pretending it's here. So if I move over here, and I'm outside of this blue ring, they have no idea what you've done, um, which is always... It's slightly better than moving a mech at the front where they can see what you've done because then all they're going to do is they're going to go, well, you move this mech, I'm going to sensor lock that and fire on it. Even if you've moved and braced, at least, uh, at least if you move something back here and they sensor lock the one at the front, then you can move the one at the front and have some evasion and brace, which is always a better better sort of uh, solution. But hopefully that covers most of the basics there. Um, I do cover it over in a lot of my multiplayer games. I try to talk out... Uh, what I do and why I do it. So hopefully that'll help out uh, with some of the new people. And with that, we'll take a break. Tune in next time for more adventures of Battletech. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you like what you've seen, hit that subscribe button or leave me a comment on anything you want to see in the future.